Imagine you're in a battle and trying to fight the obvious enemy in front of you, but you're being attacked by a hidden sniper, frustrating your efforts. That's what's happening with your health, and that sniper is stress. It kills your health and happiness, and traditional approaches like diet and fitness aren't the best answer. I'll tell you why that argument you had, your frustrating commute, or financial worry are part of the reason you crave foods high in sugar and fat, lack motivation and drive, and have a weak immune system. Plus I'll cover why I found operational tours with special forces less stressful than working in corporate London, and how you can apply the same simple lessons I learned from this to your own life. So let's rewind back to 2014 when I was serving the SBS as part of UK Special Forces, which was demanding but I was happy and performing at my best. However, after three tours of Afghanistan and other busy deployments, I was beginning to look towards the future and more stability in my life. The following year in 2015, I hung up my kit, took the leap and left the military. And by September, I was working in London for a management consultancy. Basically, I didn't have an exact plan of what I wanted to do, but this seemed like a good opportunity. But that's when things started to go wrong and why a few months later, I was sitting on my own in the office, looking and feeling knackered. I remember it was about 6.30 and I'd come in early to try and get ahead because I always felt like I was playing catch up. I had no enthusiasm or energy for what I had to get done and I couldn't figure out how I'd even got to this place where I wasn't in control, where I felt like a shadow of my former self. And if you've ever felt like that, drop a comment because one thing I've learned over years of coaching is how many people feel like this, but nobody ever speaks about it. And if this message is resonating with you, please do all the good things that YouTube videos tell you to do. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Now, looking back, I can see how much of this was stress, but I couldn't see it at the time because it had crept up until I was in this cycle where I was always reacting and everything felt hectic, but without making any progress. So weeks just slipped by and life became a battle. But what actually is stress? It's this word that gets thrown about. And stress is basically just a response that advises you on what to do. It's a reaction where your brain decides whether or not there is a threat. And if there is, it triggers a fight or flight reaction to make sure that you're best able to respond to that threat. And in small doses, this is a brilliant evolutionary system and it works very well. This response kept our ancestors safe from dangerous animals and it's what's known as acute stress, meaning it's short and sharp and in itself doesn't take a heavy toll if we find ways to relax quickly. Once the stressor has been dealt with, you need to return your body to normal to be healthy and happy. And this still serves us today. If you feel like danger is close by and you switch into survival mode, the problem is that in comparison to evolution, modern society has come about very quickly and the system that has served us so well in the past is now malfunctioning. Today, we have a frustrating daily commute, financial strain, relationship disagreements, or caring for a sick loved one. These are all situations that can trigger the stress response and then keep it going for weeks, months, or even years at a time. In today's busy world, we're prone to perceiving a low level of threat in everyday situations, leading to a long-term stress response that is extremely hard on the body. Imagine for a moment that your body is like a small medieval town. If barbarians approach, a lookout rings the bell and half the population stop what they are doing and defend the town. The attackers are fought off and the villagers return to their tasks to keep the town running. This is acute stress, short, sharp periods of alertness and necessary action only when required. But if the lookout believes the barbarians are always about to attack and constantly rings the warning bell, it means half the population are continuously on alert for an attack that never comes. Meanwhile, the grain is rotting in the fields, the buildings are leaking, and the town is generally falling apart. This is chronic stress, continuous and unnecessary pressure that causes severe damage. And in your body, this damage reveals itself in many ways, like weakening your immune system. It's no coincidence that you often come down with something at the worst times, like when when you have a particularly busy period at work or a pressing deadline. Digestive health is also closely linked to your stress levels. And when your body is constantly in fight or flight mode, it produces excess cortisol, which leaves you battling a host of aches and pains. If you've ever been for a massage, I can almost guarantee the masseuse made a comment about feeling the stress built up in your body. And this can also lead to headaches and migraines. I personally experienced the stark difference between the two sides of the stress coin during my service in the military. I felt completely on top of my game and in control at that time. My tours in Afghan, for example, were punctuated with short bouts of acute stress that were essential to survival. But periods in between this, 
they were actually very stress-free because operational tours can be a bit like being in a bubble. You have no bills to worry about, no busy commute, no day-to-day -day problems that can feel like a grind. And you have a brilliant social environment because you're surrounded by good mates the whole time. So I basically had zero chronic stress and it allowed me to function at a very high level. But when I started my job in London, that all changed. Getting onto a ram tube into the city each morning and trying to figure out costings and spreadsheets it wasn't life-threatening, but those small, constant daily stresses were adding up to have a big impact without me even knowing it. Because the problem in our always-on culture, being in a perpetual state of stress can start to feel normal. It's a bit like the fishbowl effect. Just as the fish has no idea that it's in a tank, the way that you feel on a daily basis becomes your own new normal. You don't even realize how much better you could be feeling. And this also means you don't fully appreciate just how damaging this constant day in, day out stress can be. It just bubbles away under the surface and eats away at your energy, motivation, and your happiness. But I really started to notice it. When you're suffering from stress, it doesn't take much to lose your cool. Losing your temper when someone cuts you up, snapping at your partner or your kids for nothing in particular, because you're feeling rushed or busy, or getting upset and taking offense at the smallest of things. And it's really easy to convince yourself that this is just how life is how everybody is. But unfortunately, the people who get the brunt of these negative emotions are always those closest to you. I became less social because I either felt too busy or too tired. I found it hard to switch off from work and I always felt distracted. I couldn't even watch a film without checking my phone. I had less energy and even small tasks seemed to take so much more effort. My cravings for eating junk went up because it was the easy option. And stress hormones drive us towards foods with a high fat and sugar content and my desire to train plummeted. It's the most inconsistent I've ever been with my training. Something else that I didn't talk about is the effect it had on my sex life with my girlfriend or really lack of, because my sex drive almost disappeared. And this is because chronic stress causes the body to produce stress hormones such as cortisol at the expense of sex hormones like testosterone. And the cold, hard reality is that many of us accept that a lot of these things are just how life is. I definitely got into that mindset. To be honest, it wasn't even a case of accepting it. It just crept up slowly so that before I knew it, I was that fish in the bowl. But sitting in that office and suddenly realizing I was not me anymore, I knew something had to change. And here's the thing. We can take certain simple actions that make a big difference to our stress response. When you experience a stressful event, your brain communicates with the rest of the body through the autonomic nervous system. This has two components, the sympathetic nervous system, which acts like an accelerator in a car. It triggers the fight or flight response, providing the body with a burst of hormones so that it can deal with the perceived danger. And the parasympathetic nervous system, which acts like a brake. It promotes the rest and digest, which calms your body down after the danger has passed. When these are in balance, then you feel good and your body functions properly. But if you continue to perceive something as a threat, your foot will stay on the accelerator to keep the body revved up. Arguments, frustrations, and worries will keep your body in a state of stress and slowly but surely, sugary, fatty snacks become the norm. Cortisol is elevated and you find it harder to exercise. And before you know it, caffeine gets you through the day, alcohol and junk food help you wind down. And when you drag yourself out of bed each morning, the person you see in the mirror is a stranger. But there are certain activities you can do which will counteract this. And traditionally, the first ones that come up are diet and exercise, which absolutely do play a big role in how you feel. But when you're in the grip of stress, your body might be functioning so badly, it can be a huge battle to do the things you know will help you in the long run. So you need a kickstart. The first thing I did was look back at my time in Special Forces and how I dealt with stress then. And one really simple practice that I learned from the US Navy SEALs was deep breathing to remain calm and focus clearly. Right now you're thinking, I breathe all day, every day, just fine. But how much attention do you really pay to it? Because the way in which you breathe has a massive impact on your mind and body. It's regulated by the autonomic nervous system and it strongly affects every chemical and physiological activity in your body. Right now, let's do a quick test to see where you're at. It's simple. I'll start a timer for 15 seconds and all I want you to do is count how many breaths you take. Okay, we'll start in three, two, one. However many breaths you took, times this by four to get your score for one minute. And if you want, you can share it in the comments. Also ask yourself, 
whether you were breathing through your mouth or your nose, and was it from your lower belly or from your chest? This is really important because most people breathe from their chest 16 to 20 times per minute and through their mouths. And it's this shallow breath, which is suboptimal for your body and mind because a relaxed breath originates in your belly and the optimal rate is six to 10 breaths per minute. And importantly, the inhale and exhale is through the nose and not your mouth. I use this in special forces and it's the first thing I do every morning, check in with my breathing and ensure it's deep and slow. The simplest way to remind you of this, stick a post-it note on your desk with the word breathe on it. Do not underestimate the power of building this habit. Yes, there are other strategies that you are going to need to use to fully take control of your stress response. And in the next video, I'm gonna cover step two with a specific mindset tactic. But change is most powerful when layered gradually. If you do too much too soon, you'll just rebound to zero like an elastic band you've stretched too far. Right now, concentrating on getting your breathing rate to six to 10 breaths per minute through your nose from your belly. Remember, these skills through consistent practice are going to give you that natural edge to keep you healthy, maximize your potential, and make the most of life. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe and get notified for stage two of taking control of your mind and body, and I'll see you in the next video.